And you can set your GPS to where you're going. But it's what's in the middle that can cause you to miss your turn. All right. All right. <laughs> because most GPSs is not God's amen GPS. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It takes you all around through the valley, up there, through the scenic view. But you got to know your way. And, and, and this, oh, I got to stop it. You know, I'm preaching. Verse 39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are for us, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exalt, and save yourself from this untoward generation. And then they that gladly received his word was baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and in fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. You may be seen in the presence of the Lord. First subject, and I'm not going to be long, I promise you, 15 minutes talk, and we're out here. Because I do understand that the spirit is subject to the prophet. And we do appreciate, but look to your neighbor, help me, amen, to ask them a question. Amen. Despite of their religion, despite of their traditions, despite of their religious creed, ask them, have you had your experience? Have you had your experience? Have you had your experience. It is a necessity to the body of Christ. It is a necessity to Christendom, and that is the visible church, the universal church, that those that embrace the Word of God must go beyond that saying I believe or we must go beyond even our faith because the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What it is saying is that when you believe and you have faith then now your faith becomes the substance of that which you believe. So the Lord, after I have faith, is I'm walking by sight. But I walk by faith. Because faith brings it to a place that that which we believe and that which we read about become relevant in our life. That's why I believe the writer said that the church should live by faith. In other words, what he was saying that no longer do we have to live, amen, and seek it in something that is not there. But whenever you embrace the promises of God and the will of God and the purpose of God, then that which you believe in, now it becomes manifested in your life. Yet, right. yet, have you had it? your experience. It is relevant that we understand the text because it's here in the book of Acts what the elders call it the Acts of the Apostles. Others chose to call it the Acts of the Holy Ghost. But the Acts in man is a continuation of the Gospel of St. Luke because the same writer that gave us uh, the gospel of Luke is the same writer that gave us uh, the book of Acts. The book of Acts begins with the fulfilling of a promise that was given not only to his disciples, but one that was given to Israel even in the time of the prophet Joel. So he said in the last days, hey, I should pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Hey, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall dream dreams, and old men shall have visions. I 
Isaiah picked it up and said, that when stumbling lips at another tongue, shall I speak unto my people and it shall be a refreshment. I feel like preaching, Pastor Isaiah. Have you had your experience? Because when you experience God, now your experience is not based upon tradition. It's not based upon religiosity or creeds of your fathers. But your experience becomes alive. That's why Jesus said that my word is life and spirit. Because when you get in the word of God, then no now no longer are you finding yourself finding me. But now you fall into God that created the man. So it was in Acts chapter number one that God now began to uh, establish his redemption plan of the grace. Because remember when Jesus was here, Jesus was one that was born under the law. So therefore, he kept the law. He covered himself according to the law. But when he hung there on the cross from the sixth and the ninth hour, heaven bear record that he said, it is finished. In other words, he's not saying that my life is being taken away. Now have I fulfilled everything that was spoken by the prophet, by the song. Shall it ever be up here? Jesus said that he did not come to destroy the law, but he come to fulfill. So everything that Jesus did was a fulfillment or a manifestation or a manifestation of that that was already prophesied of him. Come on, somebody. So when we understand that, then we will understand the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophesying, it comes to edify, it comes to exalt, and it comes to build up, or to comfort, if you will. Because God said that there's nothing new under the sun. And he said that he'll do a new thing, and this new thing is at the side of the of even those that are so liberal now that they want to do away with the old. But this new thing was a prophetic word that came from the prophet Isaiah because he understood that when Jesus comes, that all things would be fulfilled in him. There in Calvary. That when Jesus died, the wall of the petitions was torn down. And now you and I have access to the heaven. Y'all are helping me up in here. Because the Bible says. God had torn down the wall of the petition. Now there is access to heaven. But the problem is, the problem is because now, amen, in this generation, you, you have so many folks in churches today that they are so spiritual uh, that there's no earthly good. Uh, then you have those that are so earthly uh, that they're not no spiritually good. Uh, but when Jesus came, he came uh, and he took that which was heavenly spiritually, uh, amen, and he reached down, amen, and grabbed that which was earthly, natural, uh, and he brought it to Yeah. 
from Acts chapter 2 to the 42nd chapter, one way to the 42nd verse. Amen. I only read Acts chapter 2, 1 through 3. Then I read 39 through 42. But I promise you I wrote the middle. Because it's there. Amen. That we get four points and I'm going to let you go. But it is there we deal with the event. And we deal with the experience. And we deal with the evidence. And the effect. I come to tell you that whenever you're born again. And whenever you enter into the kingdom of God. Then God will deal with you. About where you are and how. Amen. You got there. None of us got here on our own. There had to be a moment in our life that we truly had an experience with God. I'm talking about outside of what the preacher preached. Outside of what the bishop declared. Outside of what your denomination said. 